This podcast covers the topic of marginal rate of substitution. You will learn the definition of the marginal rate of substitution, also called MRS, the economic interpretation of the MRS, and how the MRS changes along an indifference curve. Let me start with the definition. The marginal rate of, of substitution of good 1 for good 2 is the absolute value of the slope of the indifference curve. The economic interpretation is that the marginal rate of substitution tells you how much a consumer values an extra unit of good 1 in terms of good 2. For example, the value of an extra unit of coffee in terms of eggs. So, are you simply saying that the MRS is a measure of how much Mary likes one extra unit of coffee in terms of eggs? Yes. So, why does the slope of the indifference curve give us the marginal value of good 1 in terms of good 2? Uh, to keep things easy, imagine for a second that the indifference curve pass to the, passing to the basket A is linear. And imagine that the slope is a negative 3. That is, the marginal rate of substitution is equal to 3. Assume that Mary has uh, 5 pounds of coffee and a dozen eggs, uh, the basket A. Now, you go to Mary and tell her that you're willing to give her some coffee at the rate of 2 dozen eggs per pound of coffee. Would she be willing to buy coffee from you? Okay, hold on, let me see if I can get this right. If she does not buy coffee from me, then she can always just consume the ba her original basket at point A. But if she buys coffee at a rate of two dozen eggs per pound of coffee, she can consume uh, any basket on this line with the slope of negative two. For example, the basket C with six pounds of coffee and six dozen eggs. This is absolutely right. Well, then of course Mary would be willing to buy coffee from me. That's right. In other words, she would be willing to give up two dozen eggs for one pound of coffee, and she also will be better off by doing this, right? Yeah, because uh, her new basket would be in the region above the indifference curve that passes through A. Excellent. Now, instead of this proposal, uh, imagine that you go and tell her that you're willing to give her coffee at a rate of 3.5 dozen eggs per pound of coffee. Would she be willing to trade with you now? So, this situation is a little bit different. So, if she doesn't trade with me, she can still consume her original basket at point A. Um, but if she does trade with me, she could consume any basket on this line with the slope negative 3.5. And all of these points are actually below the indifference curve that contains her original basket A. So, this means that if she gets coffee and gives up eggs at this rate, she'd actually be worse off. So, Mary wouldn't trade with me. You're absolutely right. In fact, the maximum rate at which Mary is willing to trade is 3. That is the marginal rate of substitution. So, the marginal rate of substitution can be interpreted as the maximum rate that Mary is willing to accept as a trade to get coffee. In other words, the marginal rate of substitution is the maximum number of eggs that Mary is willing to give up for an extra unit of coffee. Now, do the same mental exercise, but this time, imagine that you go to Mary and ask her if she is willing to give you coffee at a rate of 3.5 dozen eggs for a pound of coffee. Would she be willing to trade with you accepting 3.5 dozen eggs for a pound of coffee? Okay, so again, if she doesn't trade with me, she can consume her original basket A, but by trading with me, she can consume baskets on this line with slope of negative 3.5. So, yeah, she'd be willing to trade with me. Very good. Now, instead of the rate 3.5, does an eggs per pound of coffee, assume you go to Mary and ask her if she's willing to give you coffee at a rate of 2 dozen eggs per pound of coffee. Would Mary be willing to trade with you? Okay, so now I think I'm getting this. Again, we have to compare the utility of Mary at her original basket A and at baskets on the line with the slope of negative 2. And therefore, no, Mary wouldn't be willing to trade with me. Very good. So now, the lowest rate, eggs per pound of coffee, at which Mary is willing to trade, is 3. That is, again, the marginal rate of substitution.
So the margin of substitution can be also interpreted as the minimum weight, eggs per coffee, that Mary is willing to accept to give up coffee. In other words, the margin rate of substitution is the minimum number of eggs that Mary is willing to accept to give up a marginal unit of coffee. So let's try to see what we learned about the margin rate of substitution. We argued that the margin rate of substitution is the maximum number of eggs that Mary is willing to give up for an extra pound of coffee. We also argued that the margin rate of substitution is the minimum number of eggs that Mary is willing to accept to give up one unit of coffee. Therefore, I hope it is now clear why we say that the margin rate of substitution gives us how much Mary value a marginal unit of coffee in terms of eggs. I think I understand now. However, what happens to the marginal rate of substitution when the indifferent curves are not linear, but instead are convex? Good question. The only difference is that the margin rate of substitution is not constant along an indifference curve, but it decreases along an indifference curve. So remember, the MRS is the absolute value of the slope of the indifference curve. For example, the slope of the indifference curve at the basket A is equal to negative 2, and the margin rate of substitution at A is equal to 2. The slope of the indifference curve at B is equal to negative 1.5, and the margin rate of substitution at B is equal to 1.5. You can see that the margin rate of substitution decreases along the indifference curve. Therefore, the assumption that the average is better than the extreme has the implication that the margin rate of substitution decreases along each indifference curve. This gives a nice interpretation to the assumption that the average is better than the extreme. The marginal value of coffee in terms of eggs decreases when the basket contains more coffee and less eggs. If Mary is consuming basket A, her margin rate of substitution is equal to 2, and so it is her marginal value of coffee in terms of eggs. If Mary is consuming basket B, her marginal rate of substitution is equal to 1.5, and so it is her marginal value of coffee in terms of eggs. In basket B, coffee is relatively more abundant, and therefore Mary values it less in terms of eggs. In this podcast, we learn the definition of the margin rate of substitution, the economic interpretation of the margin rate of substitution, and how the margin rate of substitution changes along an indifference curve.